All right, you got you got time to tell us about Lola because this one's important because people we you've so far talked about people who receive demons and become possessed because of their evil acts or Ouija boards or drugs or murder. But the story of Lola shows that it doesn't always have to be someone who does something that blood relations and curses and hexes can also bring the demonic into people's life. Lola, her father was a practicing Satanist. They lived in Mexico. Uh, she lived there with her mother and her father. And uh, her father was a practicing Satanist. The mom wanted to practice the Catholic faith, but he, he wasn't. she wasn't allowed to. So her father essentially forced her through, uh, consecrated her in a black satanic mass. Uh, Lola told me that she was forced by her father to participate in forced sexual orgies, animal sacrifices mm -hmm. in Mexico. Human sacrifice, uh, constant drug use as a child. Uh, her father would force her to teach her to do hexes and curses and incantations, uh, drink animal uh, and human blood as well as urine. Uh, she was involved in everything, destroyed holy objects. And she told me this is the way she was raised. And if she didn't do these things, she was beaten by the satanic members of the cult. And she told me that that when she was 18, her mother left her father and uh, Lola went with her mother and they joined the Catholic Church in Guadalajara. And finally, her mother and Lola, they were able to practice her faith because the father ended up committing suicide. Lola said she went to RCAA right around the age of 19, and she said that, that she knew the Catholic faith was the one true religion because, ironically, she was told this by the satanic elders all her life in her catechesis with the satanic elders. And she said she'd been told this all her life, that the Catholic Church is the one true religion started by Jesus Christ. When she was 29, she moved over to East L.A. into the Maravilla Housing Projects. Her mom's in her early 50s. Uh, I, I met her on patrol. I think it was a burglary call or something that I went there for. After she, after I took the report, she had asked me if I knew a Catholic priest who could treat her. She kind of gave me the run. I don't know. She just trusted me. I'm in uniform and stuff. And I told her, I said, yeah, in fact, I do know a priest in your area that that is uh, very good at healing, deliverance, and, and, and exorcism. And uh, I said, yeah, he's at St. Lucy's Church. He's not that far from you. So I put her in contact. She started seeing him, and he had several prayer sessions over over Lola with his team, which lasted about a year. Uh, he, he was about to hear confessions. He saw me. He said, hey, Jess, uh, Lola, he says, uh, is a very serious case, and I'm just wondering. You know her, and she has a lot of respect for you. I'm just wondering if you can come and, and join us on a, on a Monday. I said, well, that's my days off, Mondays and Tuesdays. She said, you made a lasting impression on her and if you can come and just uh, and be part of the team and just sit there and just pray in silent. And, you know, maybe if, if uh, whatever I need, hold hold my book, you know, hold, uh, you know, hold the holy water, whatever I need. I said, sure, Father, I'd be honored. You know, uh, he said, prepare yourself for nine days. I need you to go to, to mass every day for nine days. I needed to pray the rosary every day for nine days and the divine mercy and make sure you're in a state of grace. Make sure you've got a confession. Uh, within those nine days, make sure you're in a state of grace when you come and help me. So I said, no, no, no problem, Father. Lola had all the signs that we talked about early on. OK, spoke unknown languages, abnormal physical strength. Uh, she he had the ability to disclose the uh, uh, unknown things that she should not know. She had an aversion to holy objects. So Monday night came, we drove to the church. Lola, her wife were there, her, her three brothers were there. The priest also asked my wife to come. Uh, my wife also did the protocol, nine days of mass, uh, rosaries and novenas. We were there. We were there in silence behind uh, Lola. We're praying the Holy Rosary, praying the Divine Mercy. Uh, Lola was also very poorly formed in the Catholic faith. By her own admission, she'd been involved in Santa Muerte, uh, which, is, which is exactly the worship of Satan in Mexico, uh, which many Catholics are involved in. And uh, her brothers told me, uh, Jesse, uh, you know, just, you know, be very cautious as you're praying. The priest told us, he says, I'll tell you when to hold her, when to let her go if she starts manifesting. And all I can tell you is she became very strong immediately as soon as the priest started praying for her. And, you know, Lola sat on a chair. Her eyes are closed. Uh, Father puts a stole on her. Uh, the Blessed Sacrament is right behind. Lola starts having demonic manifestations. I saw Taylor. Her She went probably from about 125 pounds. Her body expanded like a puffer fish to about 200 pounds. 
right in front of my eyeballs. My wife, in front of a room full of people, her three brothers, her mom. Her arms and her legs became as hard as wood. She started thrashing and throwing punches. She was very violent. Uh, she was attacking everybody. Uh, all of us had to hold her down. It took all of our strength to hold her down. We're all praying. The priest is praying over her. And again, she's speaking in gibberish. Her eyes are her eyes are full of anger. Her eyes went pitch black. There was no pupil, no iris. She pointed to one of her brothers, and she pointed out a hidden sin of one of her brothers. I can't mention it. Her brother was living in mortal sin. She pointed it out. The brother was so humiliated that he just stood there petrified, and he, he didn't help out in prayer or in holding her down for the rest of the session. She snorted, grunted like an animal. She growled like a dog. She laughed like Vincent Price. She spoke like Smeagol from Lord of the Rings. She broke our grip several times. Now, this is something that it humbled me because I looked at her brothers. I said, you guys, three of you, myself, a priest, are you kidding me? Look at your sister. She's small and petite. They said, Jess, you have no idea. He says, this violent spirit that's in her body. When the priest, pre he goes, you have no idea how strong she's going to get. I kind of laughed, Taylor, because again, I've chased a lot of people as a cop tackle them. I've never been thrown around by a bad guy. I also have a background background in kickboxing. I, I fought for 10 years in, in full contact karate. A lot of my fights are on YouTube. You can watch my fights. Go to Jesse Romero fight montage. I was pretty good. I was the U.S. national champion amateur uh, uh, back in 1989. Uh, I was a five-time California police Olympic uh, boxing champion. So I have a background in self-defense. So I'm like thinking, are you kidding me? I I'm afraid of your sister. Are you well, guess what? When she when, when the demon manifested, she actually grabbed my chest, picked me up in the air. My feet are off the air, and she threw me, and I, I my I, my back hit the church wall. I wasn't hurt at all. I got back up and I ran back into the battle to help out the priest and help her out. And I remember at that point, I'm saying my ego was bruised. I'm saying an 120 pound, five foot three petite woman. Tossed me like a ball. I would not have believed it had it not happened to me. And my wife saw this. And about six other people in the room saw this. And the only prayer that I hadn't heard at this point in the three hours of struggling with this energumen uh, was any the Holy Rosary. So the priest said, let's pray to Mary. Let's pray to Mary. So we all started praying the Hail Mary, and the priest says, if you know it in Latin, pray it in Latin. As we, as we started praying the Hail Mary in Latin, Lola started screaming in this high-pitched voice that would have shattered glass as if she's being tortured, and she started yelling in another scratchy voice that was not hers, get her off me, get her off me. And the priest said, in Jesus' name, tell me who's on you. Lola said, or the demon said, the woman, the woman, get her off me. And the priest told us, don't stop praying. We found out what it doesn't like. So we kept praying, Ave Maria, gracia plena, Dominus tecum, benedita. We kept praying the Hail Mary in Latin. And you could see that the evil spirit was being traumatized because the energum and Lola kept, kept yelling, but the voice wasn't her voice. She was in a lot of pain. The priest asked her, in Jesus' name, tell me who's on you. Because she's saying, get her off me, get her off me. And Lola said, the lady, the woman, the woman, get her off me. And I remember at that point, my wife said, she says, my wife looked up and she says, Mary's here. Lola let out a big sigh of relief, like after a good workout, like, oh, I mean, a big sigh of relief. She rested on her stomach. She closed her eyes for about a minute. She was physically spent from a th from the three-hour prayer session. She was crying. She said they left. They didn't like that last prayer. Father said, what didn't they like? I need to know, Lola. What didn't they like? She said, they didn't like that last prayer. They couldn't stand it. They couldn't stand it. And then Lola asked the priest, can I receive Holy Communion? Father went to the, to the tabernacle and gave her Holy Communion in our presence. She was able to receive, and uh, she walked out completely smiling. Her eyes returned, her complexion, her face. Uh, the family walked out, and it's something that I'll never forget for the rest of my life.